Please welcome to the stage Ed Lean, PhD, Senior Investigator from the Allen Institute for Brain Science. Good morning, everyone. And thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today about a fantastic new collaboration between the Allen Institute for Brain Science and AWS to try to create a transformative, unifying brain knowledge platform. Let me begin by introducing the Allen Institute, which is a nonprofit research institute located in Seattle, Washington. We're actually made up of a series of institutes focused on neuroscience, cell biology, and immunology, as well as the Paul G. Allen Frontiers Group that supports cutting edge research across the world. I lead all of our human brain research at the Allen Institute for Brain Science. The Institute has a long history of tackling extremely complex problems in biological sciences, whose scale and complexity are really not easily tackled by a traditional academic research lab. We have an approach to doing this that really focuses on three big principles. Big science, tackling these really challenging problems, team science, and open science, the latter of which is the most important for what I'll tell you about today. The Institute produces large-scale data resources, and it's well known for doing this. It's been a pioneer in open science, and these resources have really profound impact across the scientific field. Our work generates uh, data, knowledge, and tools, all of which we share openly and publicly. To give you an idea of the scale, as of spring 2022, we collected about 22 petabytes of data at the Institute, and it's only increasing from here. Today, I'm going to be focusing on the brain. This amazing organ is responsible for everything that we feel and do and everything we are as individuals. It's also the organ affected in many of our most devastating diseases. A major motivation behind the Brain Knowledge Platform is to try to fill a gap. We have an enormous unsolved problem around these diseases and unmet medical need. Collectively, these diseases affect more than a billion people worldwide. The list is very long of these disorders, and we have very few cures and not even effective treatments for many of these. Why is this the case? On the one hand, we have a complexity problem. We really don't understand the brain very well or its structure and function. On the other hand, we have a data problem. There's an enormous amount of data out there in the field. It's not lack of investment, but it's incredibly distributed and disorganized. Anyone who's been to the Society for Neuroscience meeting, this is about a 25,000 member strong meeting that happens often in this very convention center, knows exactly what I'm talking about. Football field size rooms of posters, data everywhere, completely disconnected. You can't make sense of it across the whole, the whole uh, convention. So what neuroscience needs is a unifying framework. If you think about chemistry, it has a periodic table. Genomics has a human genome reference. We need the same thing for neuroscience. What would that look like? It's a, it's a reference of its component cells, the cells that make up circuits and the functional architecture of the brain. With 100 billion or so neurons in our brains uh, across hundreds of brain regions, this seems like a rather tall order. But what I'm going to be briefly describing is that we have the tools now to begin reverse engineering the brain, much like taking apart an electronic device to define the cell types and their organization. What's made this possible is a transformative set of technologies that came from an unexpected source, at least for neuroscience, the field of genomics. These single-cell genomic methods allow one to measure all the genes being actively used in individual cells. This gives a genetic fingerprint of a cell, and you can group cells that have similar fingerprints into cell types. If you now apply this to complex brain tissues, you can get, for the first time, a complete definition of the set of cells that make up these structures. This approach has been dramatically accelerated with support from the National Institutes of Health through their Brain Initiative Cell Census Network and Cell Atlas Network that aim to create a complete census of cell types across the brain. Uh, there was a whole issue of nature devoted to this topic on the first stage of this to look in one region of the brain that really established that this could work and that defining cells on the basis of their genes was meaningful for understanding cells from the basis of other properties of the cell, like their shape or their connectivity, for example. This approach has become so radically useful across biology that there are now efforts to try to map the cells in every organ in the body. 
and to aggregate that for a whole human body map based on these uh, molecular signatures. So due to the incredible scalability of these methods, with the support of the National Institutes of Health, we've been able to move to begin to create the first whole brain maps of the cells that make up the brain, both in human and also in model organisms for biomedical research, and most notably the laboratory mouse. In just a few years from the description of a single brain region, we've now created the first essentially complete maps of the entire mouse brain and a draft of the human brain that's now being expanded in greater detail. The results from this are truly remarkable. The brain has about 200 billion cells in it, and they come in an incredibly diverse range of types. They can be classified into about 5,000 types of cells. This is in the mouse. Presumably in the human, it will be at least that complex. And we can define them, and now we can map their distributions across the brain as well to create really a reference of both the spatial organization and the types. This really is like the periodic table for the brain has revealed a dramatically higher complexity than we ever had access to, to before. Uh, for the tech crowd, it's also worth noting how different this is from a computational neural network for deep learning, for example, that uses essentially one type of unit. This is not how nature does it. It has many types of units. So why is this map useful? One reason it's so useful is because it can give us a brand new perspective on disease. For example, in a project that we run, funded by the National Institute on Aging, called the Seattle Alzheimer's Disease Brain Cell Atlas, or CAD. We're looking now, using these methods, to see what kinds of cells are vulnerable in disease and to try to identify these earliest events in the disease when treatment may be possible. I want to give an example of what this looks like. In just one part of the neocortex, we can now look for changes that happen over the course of disease severity. We can look at this across this incredibly diverse set of cell populations now. In this one region, about 140 kinds of cells, whereas past studies might have been half a dozen. And what you can immediately see is that certain kinds of neurons are lost in disease, and certain kinds of non-neuronal cells increase or have states that are only seen in the disease. This is a very different way to think of disease, in particular Alzheimer's disease, which has been conventionally focused on deposition of rather nonspecific amyloid plaques, neurofibrillary tangles that have not led to effective treatments for the disease. Now, if we zoom in just a little bit more at one of these types of vulnerable cell populations, those that make connections from one part of the cortex to another, we're beginning to aggregate information about their properties. We're starting to understand what they look like, how they function, what the consequence of their loss may be in disease. And you can imagine that these cells now become targets for therapies to prevent their degeneration. And it also highlights how an increasingly rich understanding of these cells will guide new treatments. This same approach will work for any brain disease, or for that many matter, any other disease. OK, so with this emerging high-resolution map, we suddenly have an amazing opportunity to try to dramatically advance the field by aggregating information around these foundational elements and their organization. Enter the Brain Knowledge Platform, which is an ambitious effort to try to create one of the, most, uh, one of the largest and most complete knowledge stores and sources of truth in neuroscience. In principle, now that we know, understand the elements, we can in integrate information across neuroscience, genomics, medicine, from basic research to neuroimaging data to clinical data. If we could do this, imagine the impact on the field. We could unify disparate parts of the field that can't talk to one another at the moment. We could un accelerate our understanding of brain function, as well as new approaches for treating diseases. However, this creates significant technology challenges to transform this vision into reality. And this is where we move out of the realm of science and into the realm of technology and the need for us to partner with AWS as leaders in this space. On the one hand, we have a challenge of data management. Already, I mentioned we have petabytes of data. This is going to grow to exabytes in the future of many different types that need to be integrated. The second challenge is moving beyond data to extraction of knowledge that's meaningful to researchers and clinicians. And then finally, we have challenges in making these data and knowledge accessible to the community. Our goal is to democratize data access and allow anyone to openly and freely explore the data. So partnering with AWS, allows the Brain Knowledge Platform to harness the power of, of their cutting-edge technologies. It leverages scalable cloud storage, 
advanced computing capabilities, databasing, machine learning, graph analysis, and generative AI. This integrated framework presents the opportunity to revolutionize the way we explore and we discover scientific and medical knowledge. So while this is really in its early phases now, the goal of the Brain Knowledge Platform is to transform this fragmented landscape of neuroscience information into a unified ecosystem. By consolidating this vast amounts of information from diverse sources, we can create a centralized hub of knowledge that's accessible to researchers, scientists, healthcare professionals. The platform will offer a unified portal to search for advanced search and discovery. Uh, machine learning algorithms will let users easily navigate through this and begin to connect the dots across these disparate types of data. And finally, intelligent search capabilities will allow users to pinpoint relevant information and accelerate the pace of their own data with future goals to incorporate generative AI into this process. So in closing, we hope the Allen Institute and AWS will change the way we understand the brain. We're extremely enthusiastic about this collaboration and thankful for AWS for bringing the technology solutions to this grand challenge. And with that, thank you very much for your attention.